Hello my soccer universe, Serie A, the best league that you are not watching, as I like to say, gets underway this Saturday evening and I thought let's do a little bit more of an extended preview on this one as it is the other league that I'm planning to cover a little bit more extensively on my channel. Yes, I'm also a very big Milan fan and so it's only natural for me I watch a whole lot of Serie A to do a little bit more of that. The other leagues will be done more in short videos. Serie A I will focus on long video form like I do for the Austrian Bundesliga. And so I want to do it similar as I have done for the other European leagues by making a preview with questions. Now usually I do three questions for Serie A. We have seven questions to start the season. Let's get started right away. Obviously the first question has to be will it be another Inter solo? Inter still have the strongest squad, Inter won the league by a country mile, will we have the same this time around? Inter kept most of the squad intact, still have Inzaghi, they renewed Lautaro Martinez, there's a lot of good stuff happening at Inter. My big question always for Inter is, their finances are not great. How long will it take for them to actually be caught up with that? But their business has been so good, their team has worked very well. And so this Milan fan Big Rushing says Inter have to be considered the big favorites here and it would not be a surprise if Inter would run away with this league again, although we hope for a little closer race this time around. The biggest change ahead of the season was of course at Juventus, Allegri out of course, Thiago Motta coming in and he's starting a revolution. Many players have already been put on the sidelines, he brings his own players back in, however will he be given enough time to do this revolution? This is always a big question at Juve, where pressure is of course high, expectations are high, Juve should always challenge for a title. I'm not sure if we will see that immediately. Motta will need time. However, this could be a very interesting squad that you is building and I would say after a short period where everyone gets to know each other, this could work quite well. Every season one looks at the promoter teams and asks, who of those can survive? Well, this time around we have one of the most interesting crops of promoter teams. We have the most stylish team in Venezia playing in a very, very weird stadium, but it has a whole lot of charm. We have of course Parma, the great Parma, finally coming back again with good ownership. Can they hold on to that? And then of course Como, one of the most interesting stories. They have the richest owners in Italy. The Fabregas is a coach, they are building a lot of stuff. Their stadium is also right at the lake, so also very scenic. This could be a really really interesting team to watch. Is this Monza B? I can very well imagine that. I'm definitely looking forward to see what Como will do. As I said, this could be one of the most interesting stories of this entire Serie A season. I guess you've all been waiting for it as a Milan fan, of course. My big question is, is Fonseca the answer? Can Fonseca take Milan to the next level? Pioli, it seemed like it had reached a top. Fonseca, can he take them over the top and really challenge Inter? First and foremost, it has to be win a derby. Best two again. Because that is a streak that we do not want to see continue like at all as Milan fans. I liked what Fonseca did at Roma. I know he gets a bad rap because the results were not there, but he played some beautiful stuff and we already saw in preseason and I know do not pay much attention to preseason, but we saw already that Milan will play scintillating stuff at times. They did this also at Pioli, but it never really worked for a full season unless you take the championship season, but this was more or less they got hot at the end of the season. So I'm really curious what Fonseca will do. At Milan, he has the backing of the club, there have not been many new signings, but you know, the few signs they were, they will leave the squad. I'm going cautiously optimistic into the season. What I would like is, of course, at least a Scudetto. <laughs> Realistically, it has to be at least second spot and closing the gap on Inter. If a Scudetto comes along the way, and it has been said, they wanna win their 20th title as well to keep up with Inter, I will definitely not mind. Thank you. 
One of the most interesting mid-season appointments last season was of course De Rossi, who they went on a wild run before it stalled at the end of the season. Can De Rossi build on that? De Rossi is Roma through and through. It would be so much fun to see him succeed at his beloved club. And I also like the personality of De Rossi. He has great ideas, but he's also a coach that has a lot of respect for everyone else. He's loved within the Italian game. I think it was a genius appointment from that point of view. Now he just needs to deliver. Yes, there are many players that are gone now. We already know that Lukaku is out. Dybala will go out. There will also most likely Temi Abraham be leaving. So can Roma actually build on what they had last season? <sighs> Roma always feels like the biggest small club or the smallest big club. Can De Rossi change that? Over the past few years, there's always been one of the smaller teams that made some noise in Serie A. Mostly it was Atalanta, who pushed way above the weight. Last season, it was Atalanta joined by Bologna. And for the longest side, you thought it will be Bologna. However, Thiago Motta is out. Italiano from Fiorentina is in at Bologna. I'm really curious how Bologna will handle now playing in the Champions League and having to recover from letting Motta and Calafiori and other players go. However, I think they have a really good leadership at Bologna. So will Bologna be able to stay up there or will there be another team that can join? I mean, an obvious one is Fiorentina, but I don't see Fiorentina as a small team. Could it be Torino, for instance? It is high time to Torino do it, does, does something. Is Monza living up to their promise? You know, this was Berlusconi's other project team when he got too old for Milan. Monza probably could have the resources to push a little bit further. Or will it be Como? I leave the juiciest and for me the biggest question for last. Conte is in at Napoli. How long will that last? We already know that he was not very happy after the first Coppa Italia game. <laughs> so this is a match made in hell. Absolutely. Conte wants investment. He is not a coach that builds a squad. This squad went to a Scudetto and then completely disappointed. Yes, it loses a few players. It war probably will also lose Osimen and Conte wants to bring in Lukaku. De Laurenti is not known for spending. This is exactly what Conte wants. Add to it the explosive nature that is Napoli at the best of times. This has disaster written all over it. I was about to call the segment, who will burst first, Vesuvius or Conte? Realizing then that Vesuvius hasn't really burst in 1944, this might not be a good comparison. Maybe the camp of Legre will burst sooner. However, I mean, Napoli, the city already sits on an explosive mixture. Add to that now Conte, and it is just everything that a journalist wants, if you for the tabloid side. Part of me really wants Conte to succeed, and I don't want to see another horrid season for Napoli. But I think this is grab your popcorn stuff. What well, what's gonna happen? Or oh, grab your head because there's so much stupidity that it's gonna come your way. One thing is for sure, it won't be boring. Well, my first attempt at answering these questions are, of course, my predictions. Again, I take the ELO rating and I take the bookies odds. At the moment, I mix them two parts bookie, one part ELO, because, you know, the ELO rating needs to adapt to the new season as well. And maybe the bookies are a little bit more on the money here. Inter the huge favorites. There's no doubt about that. I mean, the model predicts a 10 point gap. Then Juve, I was surprised to see it slightly ahead of Milan, given that Juve starting a new project and Milan getting in Fonseca. I don't think people really trust Fonseca. So there we go. And Napoli should round out the top four. I can see that the allure is there, but honestly, as I said, this is going to be very explosive. Atalanta, not unsurprisingly, I mean, they just won the Europa League. They had a great season, are in fifth, and only then are the Roman teams. Bologna and Fiorentina still behind as East and Torino. But from Torino down, these are teams that are not expected to go into Europe. It is relatively broad for the relegation battle. Yeah, I'm sorry to say Venezia and Parma don't look really odds on to survive. Cagliari also on, on the bottom. However, look at Como. They are right around the Udinese. Now, personally, 
I actually think that teams like Udinese, Lecce and Empoli don't look very promising. And I would add to that Elas Verona, who had this fire sale and then actually survived last season. And they were almost relegated the season before. So Verona is always a team that also could go down. I could very well see Parma surviving. Not so sure about Venezia. But we for sure will love the Venezia jerseys. Or will we? Will Venezia for once not deliver? That will also be an interesting question for the season. Interestingly enough, we already got a look at a few of these teams in the Coppa Italia, which is, yes, the worst cup tournament in all of Europe. And we actually saw some surprises as well. I mean, Napoli only got over Modena after penalties, goalless draw. Conte not happy after that one. We saw Elas Verona losing to Serie B team Cesena and also Parma losing to Palermo that they just beat in the promotion cliff. I guess there was some bad blood there. And there have been other few upsets along the way. This might have been the most interesting Coppa Italia round. <laughs> But we get started for real in Genoa. Genoa hosting Champions Inter on Saturday at 6.30. But we also have Parma Fiorentina, which is a very, very classic matchup from the 90s. I'm not sure if it will live up for that. Milan gets underway then on Saturday evening against Torino. Elas Verona will host Napoli. When Napoli won the title, they also started at Verona. Just have that in mind. Roma have to go to Cagliari. Venezia will start the season at Lazio. Then we have Lecce against Atalanta. And Juve will host Como in probably one of the most anticipated games of this round. Just because we want to see what Como can do. So these were just my few cents to start the Serie A season. I am not so excited as usual for Serie A and it's mostly down to because Inter were so dominant last season but then Napoli were dominant the season before and it went all downhill but Napoli is a whole lot more explosive than Inter we also know but you know Pazza Inter what happened to Pazza Inter I want to see Pazza Inter again maybe we will see it my expectations are that Milan should perform well and this is the team that I will watch of course most but I'm not sure if they will do the title I'm absolutely not sure about that. And I'm definitely curious, Juve, Napoli, as I said, Roma. Those are the teams that I'm really most interested in. And I really hope that one of these three promoted sides, I really think this is a very interesting crop. I will watch them closely because I'm very curious to watch their path on survival and potentially even more because arguably all these three have high ambitions and very ambitious owners. Any case, let me know your thoughts on Serie A. Who do you think will win it? Who will be the Champions League? Will Serie A again get a fifth Champions League spot? Serie A teams have been doing well in Europe as of late. So yeah, very interesting league. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer slash Serie A universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!